Hello, welcome back to JD Science Prep. Today we are discussing predicting products for synthesis reactions. So if this video does help, please like and subscribe. So it says a synthesis reaction is one where two species are reacting to form one species. There are going to be five main scenarios for synthesis reactions. So what we're going to do, we're going to go through all five scenarios with an example for each. And then at the very end of this video, I have three examples that we can go through and we're going to pick out the scenario that it is and complete the question. So when you are doing these types of questions, um, it is important to a figure out what the product is, but also make sure to balance the reaction afterwards. So if you do not know how to balance right now, I do have a video on that. Go check it out before you watch this one. So the first one, it says a non-metal will react with oxygen to produce a non-metal oxide. So we just have hydrogen gas and oxygen gas reacting. And all that is actually going to make is our friend H2O or water. So what I'm going to do here, I am going to put down a 2 in front of H2O a one in front of O2. And since I have four hydrogen on my product side, I want four on my reactant side. That looks good to me. The next one here, we have a metal will react with oxygen to produce a metal oxide. So we have calcium and it's reacting with oxygen gas here. Um, so it's going to create a, uh, I guess it's going to react and make calcium and oxygen reacted together. So we have Ca2 plus and O2 negative, those are going to swap and drop. They will neutralize one another and we should just get CaO or calcium oxide. So let's go ahead and balance this really quick. We're going to have two in front of CaO. We will have a two in front of Ca and we have two oxygen already on the reactant side. So we'll just put a one or if you want to, you could leave it blank. Moving on to number three, we have a metal and a non-metal will combine to form a binary ionic compound. So this is actually quite uh, similar to rule two where we have a metal, um, but instead of oxygen, this is going to be any non-metal with a metal. So here we have magnesium and nitrogen and they are going to react together. So remember a ionic compound we have species with different charges, or charges, I guess. Magnesium is going to have that two plus charge. Um, the nitrogen ion is gonna have that three negative charge. Make sure to swap and drop here. Remember people, we have to make sure our ionic compound is neutral. And what that's gonna result in is Mg3 N2. And we can just go ahead and balance that right now. So I'll put a one on my product side in front of Mg3 and two, which gives us three magnesium on both sides. And finally, I'll put a one in front of our N2 on the reactant side, and that looks balanced to me. Next up, number four, we have a metallic oxide will react with water to produce a base. So if you remember, all bases are going to have some kind of positive ion paired with this hydroxide ion or OH negative. So we already know the ending or the uh, uh, the ending of our base is going to be OH negative, and the only thing other than oxygen and hydrogen in this reaction is potassium, and it's going to have a uh, a one plus charge. So we can go ahead and you can probably guess what's going to happen already, but those are just going to neutralize one another. And what we're going to be left with is just KOH or potassium hydroxide. So we can go ahead. We are going to try and balance this up here. I'll put a two in front of KOH. We already have two potassium on the reactant side. And I believe we are just going to put a one in front of H2O. And that means we have two hydrogen on both sides. We have two oxygen on both sides, found at different points in the reactant side. And we have two potassiums. That looks fantastic to me. Let's move on to number five. The last scenario that you're going to see 
um, for synthesis reaction. So it says a non-metallic oxide will react with water to form an acid. So we looked at bases last scenario this time. We are dealing with acids, and if you remember from previous videos, all acids are going to begin with the, uh, the H plus ion, okay? So we know our beginning already. It's going to be that H plus, and now this is a little bit of a trickier one. This follows actually a decomposition rule, okay? So if you are unsure as to what rule I'm talking about, please go check out that decomposition rule. But we have... H plus and CO3 2 negative coming together. And what that's actually going to form, because our charges, we need to neutralize everything, it's going to come together and form um, H2CO3, okay, or carbonic acid. All right, so what we can do here, we can go ahead and balance this up. I think it's going to be all ones across the board. So we have one carbon, one carbon three oxygen, three oxygen, and two hydrogen. That looks fantastic to me. So again, if you're unsure as to how I got this CO3 ion, please go check out that decomposition video. That will help immensely. So we're moving on to the three examples where we need to pick the rule and come up with the product and finally balance it. Uh, the first one, we have sodium and bromine reacting together. So let's go ahead and pick out a rule. So remember, we have a metal and a non-metal. Let's scroll up and find one. So I'm going to say this relates to rule number three here. It says a metal and a non-metal will combine to form a binary ionic compound. So let's take a look at what ions will be present. We are going to have Na plus and Br negative. Those charges will just neutralize one another, and we are going to be left with NaBr. And this is a pretty easy one to balance ones across the board. That looks fantastic. The next one, we have Al2O3 and water reacting. So let's scroll up. Let's find a rule that applies to this. And I think I found it right here. It says a metallic oxide will react with water to produce a base. So remember folks, all bases will have that hydroxide ion at the very end. And the only thing other than oxygen and hydrogen in this scenario is Al3+. So we know that our 3 plus is gonna drop down beside our OH and our answer should be ALOH3. So remember, a big thing here, uh, we need to put those brackets around the OH because the three not only applies to the hydrogen, but it also applies to the oxygen because we need three hydroxide groups. Okay, so make, make sure to include those brackets. That will do the trick. All right, so just taking a look at this, let's try a two in front of ALOH3. And I'm going to erase that too. I'll put a 1 in front of Al2O3. And finally, we have we have 6 hydrogen. So let's try and get 6 hydrogen on our reactant side. And that looks good to me. I think we're balanced. Perfect. Last one. We have potassium and oxygen reacting. Let's find a rule. We have a metal will react with oxygen to produce a metal oxide. Okay, so our product here will be a metal oxide. Our cation in this case is potassium. Our anion is O2 negative. These will swap and drop. Let's neutralize that. And we're going to get K2O. And let's just balance this really quick. We are going to have two here. We have two oxygen already on the reactant side. And we have for potassium on our reactant side. Awesome. So just a quick reminder, if you guys have uh, uh, questions or concerns about balancing or um, figuring out how to write ionic compounds, I do have videos for those. Go check them out. And if this video has helped, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.